Well, Danish wind turbine maker Vestas recently announced the world's largest turbine that will operate offshore with a wingspan of, get this, the length of one and a half football fields. But wind still makes up just a tiny fraction of global energy supply and subsidies could be cut as governments tighten their belts. Let's bring in Ditlev Engel, who's the CEO of Vestas. So some great news from the technology side. Let, let's start with that. The, the, you, you actually have this massive right. turbine. What are we talking about in, in, in terms of utility? How many homes that can power, if it makes sense from a very economic standpoint? If you take the U.S. as a whole, just to try to put it into perspective, how many of these machines would you need? to make sure that everybody in the United States got the electricity from wind? Mm -hmm. The answer to that is 44,000. Then you would have enough to make it 100%, uh, let's say, wind power uh, generated electricity for the United States. Get rid of coal completely. Everything out. Then you would then say to yourself, but 44,000, that sounds like really a lot. Mm -hmm. How much space do I need? If you actually look at, if you take an area which is 106 miles times 106 miles, mm -hmm. that's the space you need in the ocean to put up 44,000. But is this your goal truly to replace coal uh, <laughs> power in this country completely? I mean, when we look at the global picture and, yeah. and really when we look at the U.S., wind is such a small, small fraction and the wind doesn't always blow and that is always the complaint that it is not constant. I think we need to look at some mega trends here. Mm. The first decision I think we can agree on, the first is we can agree on is that the price of fossil fuel will only go up. So we won't get cheaper if we don't do something differently. Just in 2010, the United States paid $72 billion more for import of fossil fuel than you paid in 2009, mm -hmm. money which are gone. Then the question is, how can we change this? The interesting thing about this type of energy is you pay the money up front, but then in the next 20 years plus, the wind is for free, you pay nothing. So you need to think differently in order to solve this. When you get to the issue of paying the money up front, a lot of that money comes through subsidies from government. So I'm wondering what you're seeing at a time when governments are tightening their belts so much here in the U.S., especially in Europe, what you're seeing in terms of political support. The subsidy to fossil fuel that we keep forgetting when we talk about subsidies, that in 2010, on a global scale, government paid more than 350 billion dollars to subsidize fossil fuel, mm -hmm. which we say, are you competitive towards fossil fuel? My reply not only is, is that with or without the $350 billion? So you think wind's not getting enough subsidies in this country? I'm not saying it's a question of getting subsidies. My question is, we, make to make, we need to make sure we compare line for line. Mm -hmm. And I think we also have to remember that if it's talking about job creation, then the, let's say, the turbines, in order to make the most competitive, you actually can make in the United States. When you look at the first quarter for you guys uh, in, in 2011, or, orders came in lower than expected. Um, what's hurting right now? Is this the Chinese competition? No, I think the, what is hurting is actually, as you said, there are a number of countries which financial, uh, financial situation is under pressure, mm -hmm. and that, of course, will make it more challenging. But, of course, also the overall economic situation. So you can say short-term that there are challenges, but if I look at the long-term fundamentals, we had this uh, terrible accident in Japan. Mm -hmm. We're looking at fossil fuel prices going up. So I would say the value proposition of wind is being further strengthened. You said demand is everywhere. Europe a bit weak because of austerity measures. Otherwise, demand right. is everywhere. You also cut a number of jobs in Europe. Where are you looking to add jobs, to hire? Are we going to see substantial hiring by Vestas here in the United States or elsewhere, or not well, yet? Well, I would say in the U.S., we already have gone in full speed uh, and implemented a lot of jobs. Uh, and, of course, we are ready to go to the next level. But, of course, we won't happen if, the, let's say, the regulators and the politicians are not ready to make sure that there's long-term views. If I look at China... Why is China progressing so much? Well, they have a five-year plan, and they have already very clear targets of how much wind they're going to deploy in the next 10 years. And that means that everybody who wants to invest and create the jobs, where do they go? They go where they have certainty of what's going to happen. But when it comes to energy policies, then a 10-year visibility will create a completely different kind of economic uh, activity than if you do it one by one.